Hi everybody, welcome to week eight of our English 3010 online class. We are about halfway through the first part of project three. We are gonna be talking this week about your week eight activities. And I wanna talk a little bit, spend a little bit of time discussing literature reviews. So that's what project three A is I'm asking you to compose a literature review. So I want to talk a little bit about what that means and what it can look like and should look like. Then I want to take some time looking at a couple of samples that will help you think through your homework assignments for this week. You have a couple of reflection activities and annotated bibliography to complete as well. So I'm going to switch over to our Canvas view and we'll get started. Okay, so here we are in the week eight activities page. This week you're continuing your secondary research. You're searching, you're searching again, you're researching. Some of the time what happens when I am doing research in a secondary sense, I will use my digital tools Google Scholar, I'll use the Wayne State Library. I usually bounce back and forth between both of those tools. And I'll find a bunch of stuff. Oh, this looks cool. Oh, this looks cool. And I'll grab it all. And then as I'm going through and actually reading, skimming, looking at the abstracts, I might discard two thirds of them. Because even though something might look cool as you're finding it, you might realize, oh, this doesn't actually match with the question that I had. So part of searching is researching. Maybe you find a bunch of stuff, you can't use two thirds of it, you have to research. Go back to your digital search tools. You've gotta to continue this process. This is why we say that research is a process just as much as writing is a process. Sometimes you have to get a couple of drafts in before you really start to see things coming together. So this week, that's what you're doing. You're researching, collecting sources, reading them, evaluating them. If they don't pass muster, you're setting them aside and going back to your search. Rinse and repeat. So that's really what we're focusing on this week and trying to keep track of all that. That's a lot to keep track of. So. When you think about your weekly assignments, the homework is designed to help you keep track and make sense of all the articles that you're finding and reading. So this week, I'd like you to watch the week eight video, which is what you're already doing. Air fives, good job. Second, I want you to continue searching, continue to conduct library research, use those databases, use the English 3010 research guide, uh, uh. It's a really good resource. Then there's a couple quick readings, one of which is to read the sample annotated bibliography that's linked in the resources folder. We'll look at that in a minute. Just one reading from your textbook this week, which is chapter seven, understanding plagiarism and integrating sources. And then keep reading, rereading the sources that you're finding. In terms of writing, You've got a reflection journal that helps you kind of monitor your progress so far in this searching process. Project Builder 9 is the annotated bibliography where I'm going to ask you to summarize and analyze six of your sources or more. Reflection Journal 5 is going to ask you to sort of start reflecting on all of these readings by drawing them or visualizing them, representing them visually. Again, all of this stuff is going to be due Sunday night. So if you're keeping score, keeping keep to our schedule, by Wednesday, so that will be tomorrow, you want to have watched this video and done all the little readings so that you can start with your reflection for monitoring your progress. Then just continue searching, continue gathering, continue evaluating your sources. Um, aim to have your annotated bib up and running by like Friday or Saturday because that will help you be able to do the visual reflection, complete your reflection journal number five. Okay, so let me just really quickly take you through 
the annotated bib assignment. This is Reflection Journal 4. I'm going to click forward once again to your annotated bibliography. Now, the thing with annotated bibliographies is that they are meant to keep track. Annotated bibliographies are a tool that scholars use to keep ourselves organized because we're reading and sifting through a really large amount of information, as you know. There's a lot to keep track of. Sometimes the titles of things mush together or you don't remember, was this the article that said that or was this the article? So you just keep it all written down in some fashion. The annotated bibliography is the easiest way, mainly because it kind of hits two birds with one stone, if you will. The annotated part is the summary and the analysis where you're going to quickly, succinctly say what the main argument of a source is, and then you're going to talk about how it connects to your research question. Then you've got your citation. The bibliography part of it is that you are, as you're going along, creating your APA or MLA citations so that you have them. You just cut and paste them, and then you'll have your full citations for your end text citations at the end of your lit review, right? There's a method to the madness. Also, you can look back at the summaries and the analysis bits that you've composed for this annotated bibliography, and you can use some of that stuff in your lit review. So what I want to do now is I'm going to pull us out to the home page here. And then I want us to look at the sample annotated bibliography that's here so you can get more of a sense for what I mean. All right, we're scrolling down, scrolling down. All right, so here we go. The sample annotated bibliography. So this is an annotated bibliography from my discipline of writing studies. Um, I did not create it. One of my colleagues did, but it's a really good example for exactly what you're trying to do here. So here you can see that at the top the writer has really tried to set up the main issue that she wants to think about throughout this whole lit review, the problem of tuning in journals. So that might be a good idea for you. Maybe put your research question or the research topic that you're really delving into at the top so that you can kind of keep track. We've got the MLA citation right here, and it's all formatted, so all that needs to happen is just a cut and paste into the other document. And then this writer has given a good, solid paragraph here to summarizing the article. Then, and I kind of, the word application is in here just to kind of help differentiate, but this part is the application part to what? To this, the problem of tuning in journals, the research issue that this writer wants to focus on. So you can see it as you go down. What I'd like you guys to do is really read this to see, first of all, how does this writer set up her summaries and then look at the verbs, really focus in on the verbs for how it applies to her research topic. She uses active words like provides, and then she really connects it to her main research interest here. So take a close look at this sample annotated bibliography, and you'll get a good idea for what you want to do. I would recommend, as you guys are working on your annotated bibliographies this week, to take it slow, maybe focus on one to two sources at a time. That way it's not quite the overwhelming prospect of generating us, you know, two paragraphs times six. But if you do two paragraphs and then two paragraphs and then two paragraphs and then two paragraphs, you could probably bang it out in short order. Okay. So for the assignment, Ugh, I'm losing my words here. I don't know why. <laughs> Having a brain fart. For Reflection Journal number five, 
I'm asking you guys to take basically all the sources that you looked at for your annotated bibliography and like synthesize them visually. So there's a couple of sample visualization maps here and I want to show you a couple different ways that they could look. So here, this visualization map, um, this one was created by a student who I'm going to guess was very structured. Um, so this student took their sources and put it basically into a grid that was organized by the article title, date, authors, and then some key questions that would help this student to evaluate the article. Now, that's very linear. It's a, it's a grid, so it seems very orderly. That might be just your speed, or maybe you're thinking for visualization, maybe you're going to want to do something a little looser. Maybe you're going to want to map things out a little differently. So this student is working from, looks like probably like, you know, the shapes that you can copy and paste in Microsoft Word, so nothing too fancy. But it's a typical kind of mind map to help us see connections between the sources. There's two ways that the student is visualizing them. This way is by subtopic, and this way is showing us connections and how the articles actually do speak to each other about all of these smaller issues. Now, if you feel comfortable, you can do a mind map of this style in a digital format, like you can make it in Microsoft Word or Adobe or whatever. You can also just free write that. Just draw that puppy out. You can do it and you can visualize in a lot of ways. So don't feel like these two examples are your only choices. But what I'm trying to get us to do here is to really start seeing how all the texts mesh together and how they talk to each other. Because one of the main things that you're going to see as you're writing your lit review is that these sources should come together to help you answer your question or make your argument. All right, so I think that does it for the Canvas view stuff. I'm going to pull us out and close up this video. Okay, so as we close up this video, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the genre of the literature review in general. Um, this project is asking you to write a standalone lit review, which is not super common. Usually what we find, and what you've probably noticed as you've been reading through academic articles, is that we find lit reviews embedded within larger genres, like a write-up of a research study or a theoretical argument. Here is an example of an article that I just read today. It's actually a chapter from a collection. And all this part here is lit review. I don't know if you can see that super well. But one of the functions that this lit review has for this article is to highlight the gap in the research that this chapter is trying to fill. So. I wanted to say this as you guys are kind of sorting through all your sources and maybe there's just not a lot there on the question that you have. That is okay. In fact, that's kind of a researcher's dream. I'll tell you why. Because sometimes what we see when we do a lit review is we see what the literature doesn't say just as much as we see what it does say. So perhaps, like with this lit review, we see that there are many different frames for what's called knowledge transfer. The one thing that we don't see in all this literature that's been cited is the frame that this chapter is going to put forward as another important frame for thinking about the topic. So, when you're reading, maybe what you're going to find is that there's a gap in the literature and that that's where you get to come in. And when we start working on project four, writing up the research proposal, that's what you're going to propose is to do the research that's going to fill the gap. 
But for right now, when you're looking at all of your sources, you're looking for connections, you're looking to see who agrees with who, who disagrees with who, and about what. So it might be more complicated. It's not going to be necessarily a simplistic two-sided these are for and these are against, but more likely what you're going to see is that these several articles are all loosely talking about my topic and some of them overlap and some of them don't at all. And maybe there's a noticeable gap in there where there's something that no one is really addressing or talking about. These are the things you want to keep your eyes peeled for as you're doing your homework this week, and it's going to help you to get your brain engaged in these questions because next week we're going to start drafting your lit review. You're going to be pulling from annotated bibliographies. You're going to be uh, summarizing, putting text and conversation with, together according to the visual that you make for Reflection 5 and drafting it all up into its own succinct synthesis of all these sources. So, happy thinking. Today, this week is a thinking week. You're, you're puzzling things out, seeing where these sources fit together. And honestly, I think this is one of the funnest parts of secondary research. So if you have any questions about any of the stuff that we've covered in this video, please feel free to shoot me an email. You can always stop in for Rayanne's office hours or for my office hours. Uh, hit us up on GroupMe. Lots of ways to contact myself, Rayanne, your other fellow classmates, and to get support as you think through stuff this week. Okay, I think that about does it. Happy reading researching, and thinking. Bye, everybody.